So we have Dr. Tamunaj uh, Basu, uh, who is uh, um, an MS gold medalist, and he's an associate consultant at BBI Foundation, uh, Trinetralia Eye Clinic in Kol Kolkata. And um, he is uh, a practitioner and a surgeon who deals with glaucoma, cataract, and anterior segment disease services. He has innumerable uh, publications in national and international journals. And uh, we are going to hear a very interesting case uh, from Dr. Basu today. Over to you, Dr. Basu. Good evening, everyone. Uh, hope my slides are visible. Yeah, they are. Please, please yes. go ahead. Uh, thank you, Dr. Parthavisha, sir. Thank you, Dr. Bhalla, sir, and uh, the whole AIOS scientific community for, to, uh, for giving me the opportunity to, to uh, present here. So I'll be presenting a case of a 37-year-old healthy male who presented uh, to a glaucoma specialist first in 2004 for a second opinion of a glaucoma. He was already on uh, timolol and uh, brimonidine combination uh, twice a day for last four months. The baseline uh, IOP from old records was 34 and 32 respectively. And uh, these are the CCTs. He had a strong family history of glaucoma uh, uh, in father and elder sister. So on examination during 2004, uh, the VCVA was 6 by 7.5 and N6 and 6.9 N6 uh, with lead conjunctiva and extraocular movements were normal. Uh, it was a deep uh, anterior chamber. Uh, the pupils were uh, round reacting normally in the right eye, but uh, in the left eye, it was sluggish with a, a RAPD uh, present. The lenses were clear. Uh, the intraocular pressure with uh, uh, Goldman Applanation tonometer uh, with Timolol and uh, Brimonidine was 14 mm uh, in both the eyes. The gonioscopy was open till ciliary body band. There was no PAS. And uh, the uh, on uh, disc evaluation, uh, the disc was uh, 0.5 is to 1 with inferior notch in the right eye and uh, 0.9 is to 1 with a superior rim thinning and inferior rim loss in the left eye. So, age. Uh, HVF was done in 2004. So uh, the right eye had a, a few uh, nasal defect and uh, left eye had a pretty advanced bioacquid sort of defect. Uh, so the patient was uh, uh, branded as a, a juvenile open angle glaucoma uh, with right eye early damage and left eye advanced glaucoma. In view of advanced glaucoma in the left eye, the left eye was added by metoprost at bedtime. And the patient was advised to follow up after four months. This was in his old records. The patient lost to follow up for uh, next uh, 14 years. He was uh, showing up locally, but uh, not to any glaucoma specialist. He uh, came again for evaluation uh, in 2016. Uh, no previous records were available, but uh, according to the history given by the patient, the right eye trabeculectomy surgery was done in 2010 elsewhere. And uh, uh, left, uh, left eye was done in 2010 and right eye trabeculectomy surgery was done in 2013. So in 2016, uh, the BCVA was 66N6 and 69N6. The color vision was absolutely normal in both the eyes. There was a blade uh, which was flat uh, in the uh, both the eyes. Uh, uh, SC was still deep and uh, there was a RAPD in the left eye. Uh, right now, uh, when the patient presented, the IOP was uh, 11 and 10 with latoprost uh, at night, dorsolamide and telomolol combination uh, twice daily and tablet acetazolamide twice daily. Uh, the glaucoma has progressed, uh, obviously. The disc was 0.8 uh, is to 1 uh, with IR notch and superior rim thinning. And uh, in the left eye, it was 0.9 uh, with bipolar rim thinning. So in 2000, uh, so what uh, the glaucoma specialist did was uh, to st they stopped, uh, he stopped the acetazolamide and asked the patient to come back after one month for repeat HVF. Uh, and in between, the IOP was taken again after one week also. So uh, the IOP after the uh, with three AGM was 17, which was not in the target range. There was obviously a sp uh, progression in the right eye HVF and the left eye HVF showed a uh, then superior arcuate scotoma with inferior arcuate scotoma. Uh, so the patient as the IOP was not uh, in uh, target range, the brimonidine eye drop was added. One minute so remaining, sir. So uh, in between from 2016 to 2020, the patient was uh, under care of uh, multiple glaucoma colleagues uh, in Kolkata. The latest visual field uh, is uh, the right eye shows definite progression and the left eye also has shown some uh, subtle progression. In all from 2016 to 2020, there was never a, a IOP spike was noted. 
the uh, in 2019 as the glaucoma was progressing even with the uh, normal iop extensive uh, examination was done uh, and it was found that the color vision in the left eye has dropped to 1 by 21 daytime dvt was also done which was found to be in the normal range 12 to 13 uh, mm of hg in uh, both the eyes and there was a near total cupping this is the uh, this status at 2019 there is 0.8 cupping with an inferior notch and uh, almost near total cupping in the left eye this is a red free fundus photograph showing a, a slit uh, rnfl defect uh, in the right eye and uh, generalized loss in the left eye and uh, the ocrt images also show uh, the corresponding thinning so during this 2016 to 2020 there was a uh, with uh, despite well controlled iop there was a uh, continued progression in the uh, right eye and there is a subtle progression in the left eye so uh, as a uh, wind view of oil control IOP, uh, still the uh, glaucoma fields are progressing. We uh, uh, refer to the neuroophthalmology specialist and uh, brain uh, MRI was found normal. Carotid Doppler found, uh, results were normal. And in the, uh, the extensive study that we done, uh, we have found during the sleep study, mild obstructive sleep apnea was there. Uh, this is the report of the- uh, So your time is up, sir. This is the uh, report of the study. It is the uh, outside center slip study. Uh, it is done in the home. So they have written a uh, mild uh, OSAS is there. This REI should be less than five. It is in the mild range. So this is the eventual finding uh, we have got uh, in this case, but we can't pinpoint it uh, to the OSAS because a right eye is showing a definite progression and a steep progression but uh, left eye is not showing that much of a progression. So we can't blame the OSA alone. The patient is started uh, on treatment by the uh, sleep therapist on positional therapy and positive airway pressure. These tests are still due and the patient is yet to follow up because of the COVID uh, last seen in 2020. So what next? If the patient comes next, uh, the patient is already on ma maximum tolerable therapy. If the progression is there, what should be done next? And how low should we expect with the surgeries also? So that is the thing. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's an interesting case where the glaucoma, in spite of uh, achieving target intraocular pressure, has continued to progress. And it, it, uh, the thing uh, asymmetrically, more so in right eye compared to left eye. And it's an interesting case. I like to have comments of the uh, discussants. The discussants for the case are uh, Dr. Ronnie George and Dr. Ramanjit, ma'am. She's left. So, Dr. Ronnie, sir, please uh, go ahead and we would like to hear your valuable comments on the case. Uh, thank you, Dr. Bhalla. And uh, Tamarash, that is, I think, a very nice case to discuss because we do get these sort of patients and they're very difficult to manage, presented well. Uh, just a couple of things. One of the things that we should know is because you don't have information for 14 years in between. So at that point, you have no idea what actually happened to the pressures. And considering that the primary diagnosis was a juvenile onset open angle glaucoma, it's quite possible that you would have had very high pressures in, in between because JOG sometimes behave like that. And if you had pressures in the 30s or at that point in time, that could account for that large progression that you're seeing in the right eye. His, his uh, trabeculectomies appear to have been done by a non glaucoma specialist. Not that ours don't fail, but ours do fail too. That may also account for why it did not work as well as the left eye trabeculectomy done. And if you look at the, your progression analysis slide that you showed, you will see that in around 2016, you have a point which is right down there. Then it goes up. And then the current slide uh, visit that you're seeing, again, the point is down there. And both are within the test retest variability for progression, as at least for the series that you showed. One of the things that happens with when you're looking at visual fields with this amount of damages, if you look closely at the mean deviation there, the MD is minus 21. When the MD crosses minus 20, Yes, sir. Obviously. The yeah. analysis goes from uh, the, the visual field index is plotted using the MD instead of the PSD. And you see this sort of big fluctuation sometimes. So I would look closely at the MD values uh, in that range. And this may not actually be true fluctuation. And if you repeat a field soon after this and you find that it goes up over 20, you don't need to be that concerned. Having said that, I would also consider investigating him because those discs look marginally pale. And even though the vision, I mean, he's got significant damage in the left eye and you can sometimes get a color vision loss with advanced damage, we should actually investigate him and rule out anything else. 
If nothing else works, I would definitely consider surgery because this is somebody who's relatively young, who's progressing. Don't forget that even if his IOP is in the same range with surgery as with medication, the fluctuation comes down. Comes down yes. And that itself helps with progression. So take home message here is high index of suspicion. Look at the MD value when it's around 20 to see whether that's the reason for the progression or not. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, Dr. Gauri and Dr. Prateep. Dr. Gauri, you are muted. Uh, sorry, sir. I think Dr. Rani has excellently summarized uh, the uh, uh, you know important points. So whenever a patient is progressing despite your apparently maintaining target intraocular pressure, another thing that I would look for is compliance. Many times the patient puts the drops before coming to the clinic but in between may have missed. So it is important to elicit non-compliance. So first thing is to be non-judgmental because a patient is usually afraid that you will judge him or her that you have missed the drop. So indirect questions like how long does a bottle last? Have you, I mean, it's so natural to forget. So how often do you forget? You now make it easy for the patient to come, come out with non-compliance if he or she is non-compliant. Then you can try counseling them. And if it is really not feasible, one can opt for other uh, ways, surgical ways of managing. So compliance is one thing that I would look at. And uh, pretty much the other things have been covered. So that's all. Thank Dr. Prateep, sir. Dr. Prateep, are you yeah, there? Doctor, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah, very sir. much there. Yes, so, sir. Actually, Dr. Roni and Gauri have summarized very well. And uh, after doc listening to Dr. Ronnie's comment, I don't think that I have anything to offer uh, because, you know, he has beautifully summarized everything and uh, uh, topping was done by Gauri. <laughs> yeah. That's wonderfully done. Uh, well, Dr. Tamunash, uh, was the patient uh, patient hypertensive or any kind of anti-hypertensive drugs which could have no, reduced no, confusion no, pressure? Yes, and No. Uh, no, sir. The patient is healthy, but we have uh, yet to receive the 24 hours ambulatory BP monitoring reports. That was advised by the new ophthalmologist. We are yet to receive, but but patient is not uh, uh, hypertensive. Because that, that... our systemic workup is very important. You know, as exactly. uh, Shweta, Shweta has also uh, mentioned during her talk that, you know, the Wegener's granulomatosis was the possible reason for the glaucoma or the high intraocular pressure. So similarly, a good thorough work with these kinds of patient is very much needed. And uh, obviously, as yes, a uh, good thorough 24 hours IOP control is very critical. And the best uh, 24 hour IOP control you get with the uh, surgery. So I think those are the uh, very rightly pointed and summarized by Dr. Rani uh, that if the patient is continues to progress, so that. Uh, the, the factor of sleep apnea do not seem to be very likely because there was asymmetrical progression and rightly pointed out that for 14 years, the patient was lost to follow up. So how did the disease progress during those period is uh, really, we don't have much idea about it. And uh, the compliance is a big factor. Also, also is ocular perfusion pressure, which should be taken into account. What would you say about adding carbonic anhydrase inhibitor, which are supposed to increase the ocular perfusion in these cases we have uh, can be one of the drugs which can be added. Although everything possible has been done and the target IOP seems to be between 12 to 13 millimeter of the blood, although I wish it could be a bit lower than that. Dr. Roni? I, I think... I, I, please, don't, uh, yeah. please go ahead, Roni. No, no, please go ahead, Dr. Yes. <laughs> no, no, I, I was telling that, you know, we don't have the enough evidences which suggest that uh, it increases the ocular perfusion. So we don't just have. on the basis of our theoretical knowledge, we cannot rely on that and exactly. uh, just give the, give the dorsalamide or brinzolamide and just relax that your patient will have an increased perfusion and will not progress. So don't carry away that message. Mm. I think we are not sure about the, the possible mechanism of progression and the increase perfusion also is uh, questionable. I think uh, the, that uh, uh, not the uh, message. Excuse yeah. me, Dr. Bhalla, I have just one question to all yeah, the please. specialists. In a case scenario such as this, if you have to go for a re-surgery, what would be your uh, surgery of choice? Okay, Dr. Murthy or Dr. George would be... I like, would do a trabeclectomy with mitomycin. Okay. With reusable yes. sutures, 
close post of follow up i agree to with dr roni because a valve will be a lower down in my uh, the thing if there is uh, intact conjunctiva i would do a trabeculectomy with mitomycin with uh, releasables if uh, necessary and uh, close monitoring in the post operative period to ensure that your bleb starts functioning and remains functioning thank you uh, if good healthy conjunctiva is available yes then my choice also will be trabeculectomy yes rightly because as seen in the case the blebs are flat and the second retrap uh, i i think uh, should be considered trap with mitomycin c which will not only decrease the intraocular pressure further but will also reduce the fluctuation if uh, that is one of the mechanism i think with that we come to the end of the this excellent webinar on glaucoma case files conducted under the auspices of aios scientific committee uh, uh dr Farooz, would you like uh, to say something to offer then, you? Uh, yes. Uh, Farooz, so you are coming... asked to say something. Something, <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, it has been wonderful. Although you know, uh, I don't do glaucoma in most part of my practice, but I have seen Dr. Gauri doing excellent job in glaucoma at Prabha, and you know, so we refer cases to Dr. Gauri. So I've never put in my brains too much into it. but excellent cases great presenters and a uh, lot of discussion it was learning sincerely a great learning for me so that's how it goes so over to dr partha to take the touch yeah. <laughs> at the end yeah thank you very much uh, i really would like to oh. thank first and foremost all our chairpersons uh, our chairperson and our panelists to have taken up so much time from their busy schedule and a saturday evening <laughs> i'm extremely sorry but i'm sure our viewers have learned a lot and uh, it has been a very very nice and a very welcome webinar after a very long time and we had this uh, series of the case files the glaucoma case files the cornea case files the cataract case files in the previous year also and it was extremely well received thank you very much all of you and our presenters uh, do manage to have uh, taken a lot of pains in preparing their presentation and each one has been one presentation of its own kind so these are big eye openers a lot of take home messages have come in but the person who has worked the most for this webinar is of course my dear bhalla and uh, he has taken up everything on himself he has uh, called all of you he has possibly he bothered you at difficult times different times but uh, you know this is what is bhalla for all of us and uh, all our scientific committee members are so passionate about these programs that uh, this is how we really do a great team work at the scientific committee thanks a lot bhalla and uh, for your last comments now thank you thank you uh, dr partha for those uh, wonderful and inspiring words uh, i think uh, i would uh, like to thank everyone the committee team uh, dr lalit for being here dr namrata and of course our chairperson dr ramanjit uh, the expert panelist dr chandrima dr harsh dr roni dr pratip dr uh, sushma and also our speakers i'd like to mention make a special mention of dr julie pegu who uh, because of my oversight i uh, forgot uh, introducing her dr julie pegu is a very known glaucoma specialist from shroff eye center and she has done numerous presentation and is a wonderful teacher uh, dr varsha this was our first presentation a congratulations dr varsha dr alokesh who at very short notice Uh, did wonderful presentation dr prerna dr shweta dr tanumesh again i them he hardly got any time but he did a wonderful presentation and my co moderator i have don't have enough words to thank uh, dr feroz for sharing the burden and really helping me out uh, all my scientific committee colleagues dr somshila amit sonu parikshit and kp kudlu and uh, once again i think it was a very nice learning experience for all of us wonderful cases and wonderful discussions we had thank you everyone over to and you pa thanks thank to sharuk uh, sharik uh, uh, for being here with us and uh, our back end team pallavi and uh, kripal and his whole team at the headquarters thank you very much all of you thank you and have a good evening thank you thank you thank you everybody